select the bits we want to fund them. Fund them. We've since, well, at the time we published some summaries of this project on our, on our website. Uh, and looking at this, it's probably a bit out of date, actually, in terms of data. <laughs> um, but that will survive uh, next week as we go to a launching new website next week, and this is still on there, so I think we should update that. Um, okay, moving on to some numbers. Um, I've tried to minimize the text on the, on, on the um, presentation so that don't kill you with the uh, PowerPoint. But anyway, um, this one shows the growth and recruitment of students across the whole sector. This is through the co funding model, so these are just co funded students, not a broader um, capture of all students who may have worked with through your projects. Um, so you'll see that from 2009, that's about 9,000 students. And that's grown through to 2010, 11, over 30,000 students, and again at 11, 12, and then the more, something like 37,000 students forecast to be recruited. Um, you'll also see the green line, which is the rate of recruitment against FE targets, so the actual rate of recruitment is much lower than, say, for our fully funded equivalent additional student numbers that we normally cut this down. Um, and it's declined slightly. That probably reflects both the challenge of working with employers and recruiting workplace learners. It also reflects the fact that the growth has been quite dramatic across the three year period. So our institutions targets have often been doubled in the year, you know, which is kind of very unusual. So this is almost like, or it feels almost like growing a new part of, of um, the system, if you like. Um, This, I should point out, is drawn, drawn from the end of year monitoring returns. Uh, we also re uh, monitor through the higher education statistics agency student record, um, and it's this the PISA data that confirms whether we've actually had government targets or not. And I can tell you that we did manage the targets across all three years, which uh, recently fed back to government, and their response was uh, well done. Um, co funding, we didn't know. Who we didn't realize when we had so good was the response. Anyway, um, moving on. So uh, more numbers. This is again at the end of, end of year monitoring returns also reported the extent to which employers are contributing towards the cost of provision through either cash or any kind contributions. And you can see that both the amount of Fund, co-funding from FDM employees has obviously grown and the proportion has also grown so it's managed to reach 40% in 2010, which is a, quite a remarkable achievement from through universities when you consider the whole thing was implemented over the recessionary period. So uh, thank you for that. Um, this one's not quite as interesting. This just focuses on 10 11. It shows the kind of mix of co-funding contributions across public and private sectors and cash and kind contributions. Um, and it's remained pretty stable throughout, throughout the period. So uh, you know, at the outset, we might have thought that private sector proportions would have increased for three years. Obviously, the recession meant that public sector still remained very important to institutions. And finally, this one's probably of least value, but I've not left it in any way. Um, so the one on the left is the kind of different price groups that have to be housed. That Again, the price of the D is classroom based subjects, the D is kind of all technology and healthcare related, and B is the um, kind of more science and laboratory based. I guess, that, again, at the outset of the program, <coughs> I might have expected more in price of the D, so more leadership management type stuff. But actually, as, as things have been implemented, institutions have kind of told us that actually employees have demanded more kind of technology and science based and stuff. Um, the middle one is part-time and full-time, which I guess is not a surprise that most of this is part-time provision. I haven't looked specifically at the Center for Local Learning because that's quite a possible institution, so I don't know how much this mirrors your own project. Uh, and the chart, the bar chart on the right is probably, a, the, again, the least useful in the sense that most learners, at least from the A9 data, seem to be um, studying towards institutions for the program, so a lot of it's involved in that um, undergraduate, uh, undergraduate um, provision and the ESA returns. So, um, <coughs> I've, 
pulled out some things that I've been interested in from the evaluation. Um, it's, it's a very rich resource of 100 pages. Uh, different aspects will interest different people, but from my perspective, um, I've pulled out these ones and I've kind of used these in, in um, reports to the various um, committees and people work. So, um, the first one is um, obviously with investing £100 million, pounds, we hope that infrastructure has developed, in fact, with the evaluation reports that has been developed. They also said it was probably likely to be sustained in there. So, uh, some examples which you'll probably be more familiar with now is that new staff roles have been created, uh, new administration systems, particularly around uh, student, work with students, um, new structures and processes, so QA is an example, uh, different types of delivery models. Um, in addition, uh, another one you'd expect to happen is that employer relationships have been developed. Interestingly, the evaluation report says that generally institutions have kind of deepened relationships with existing employers and have, have not uh, tended to uh, broaden out their, their, their employers. So they haven't recruited lots of new employers and tend to work with ones they already knew. Having said that, the end of your monitoring reports kind of report, do report quite a lot of new employers, so um, there's kind of a difference between what the qualitative research pulled out and what the data was talking about. So I'm not sure what your own experiences will be about, you can let me know. Um, the, um, I should point out on the infrastructure one that actually the, the evaluation says that institutions recognize the need to utilize the infrastructure better, and they mentioned in a CRM system as an example of that, like lots of projects have implemented new systems, but they haven't yet kind of worked out how to use them effectively. Um, and they're on a, they're on a long journey, essentially. Um, increased knowledge, learning, confidence across the sector, uh, I think that was kind of apparent in, the, in this higher education academy group, where at the outset there's some, some project leads kind of have less confidence and talk to the more experienced colleagues in other institutions, and then throughout the period they've actually grown their knowledge and confidence and now they speak um, uh, with confidence about what's needed to implement uh, this, this project, but also about how to work with employers and, and to capture the value of it in, in their own institutions. So there's, there's been an incredible amount of learning as this has been implemented, which can uh, hopefully resonates with your own experiences. Um, and then it's finally an observation about the co-funding mechanism from EFGI. Uh, it was welcome subsidy, but they didn't like the mechanism. It was complicated, and EFGI could have done more to uh, explain it. Uh, that's primarily because it's uh, normally with EFGI funding, it channels through you know, hiring people and data people and then they communicate you know, through their institutions. Uh, we've kind of dealt with co-funding direct to um, sort of other support staff who perhaps could have had more support from EFGI. Again, um, just providing a little more context. Um, obviously, this this is quite a, quite a narrowly focused program, and there's obviously a lot more um, work that the sector does with employers. But there's also a lot of other policies that have been implemented that have had a, kind of links into work with employers. So this kind of is, is a chart drawn from the annual Higher um, Education Business Interaction Survey, another data return that institutions make to FD. And it just shows that more broadly that there's been growth in, in employer-related activities. And this is just kind of one set, set of it, and this is bad income. Um, um, other policies related to employers, we have obviously the Higher Education Innovation Fund, uh, the new approach that the government wanted us to take in terms of and focusing solely on income from employers and not the wider public value and that community engagement. Um, the evaluation of that uh, and, and an analysis that we are publishing at the end of the month show kind of shows for every pound you invest in this type of money, you get X amount back and it's between about five and seven pounds. Again, that kind of links into the government and the Treasury's interest in. in, in maintaining the funding through to 1450. Uh, we're about to kind of think about the, the, the next case with various different funding costs for the next 
and obviously other policy developments uh, alongside our program, Centre for Excellence in Teaching and Learning, support of a number of um, institutions in the area of work based learning and ability in the higher education academy has done an analysis of, of those uh, settles. Uh, obviously, lifelong learning networks, which is relevant in this region. Um, and also to do the recession, we funded some um, activities in there, such as um, helping support small businesses around internships for unemployed graduates, which you may remember to go if you want to the investment fund. Okay, now focusing on slightly negative um, aspects perhaps. Uh, impacts of changes, obviously change in government, change in policy, um, uh, quite dramatic changes in some respects. Um, deficit reduction, smaller, more targeted investment. Um, so, you, I mean, you might have seen in the budget in 2012 the announcement of £100 million for research facilities, uh, which is capital funding. The government actually wants that to achieve double match funding, so we're having to allocate that on the basis that the universities are going to make huge amount from private sources. Um, see how successful that is. Um, and, um, and the, another example of the targeting of funding is the it was, it's 50, committed 50 million pounds to graphene at the University of Manchester when people don't seem to know what graphene might be to. Um, anyway. Apparently that was on the back of a letter that the Vice Chancellor of Manchester University wrote to um, George Osborne, so I don't want to find that. <laughs> don't quote me on that, because it might be wrong, but anyway. If it's true, I would love to see the letter. Um, okay, um, so this is a diagram basically showing uh, the impact of the government's change of policy in higher education reform. So the bottom kind of burgundy colour is um, FD grant, and you can see that this is both research and teaching. Uh, and the research is kind of a cash equivalent across the years. So the reduction in teaching grant is quite dramatic across the next three years, and obviously it's replaced by the tuition fees in the blue band. Um, and although the FD funding is reducing quite a lot, the calls on FD funding isn't reducing. So we're getting a lot of calls to do as much with less funding. So it's, it's quite a challenging environment at the moment to try and work with government to prioritise activities. And it's possible that they may change our priorities over the next three years as they start to really like, uh, understand some of the impacts of um, some reforms putting the money through the loan system and leaving it to kind of to a market, just as a market, and what, what are some of the effects and impacts of that. Um, we've also had to change some of our own policies as a consequence of this, so uh, the government's asked us to focus most of the teaching grant that is left over um, on things like high cost subjects, so at the moment fees is a maximum of £9,000, but some of the costs are subjects are above that. So we had some proposals out to the moment of consultation on this and a number of other areas. Uh, they've also asked us to focus on widening participation, which are now important student opportunities, um, and strategically important vulnerable subjects, and obviously that will continue, but again, we've proposed a different approach on that to make kind of three, probably three highlights from our perspective.